Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of Telco Cyber Talk, where industry experts gather to discuss the current cybersecurity and critical business issues faced by communication service providers. Hi, before we get started, I'd like to let you know about a webinar coming up. On March 14th and 15th, Tag Cyber and Alot will be presenting a cyber threat report with new information about Bitcoin Trojans, command and control infections, adware delivered browser hijackers, ransomware, and other cyber threats encountered by our Tier 1 communication service provider partners. More details are available at alot.com. And now, on to the podcast episode. Hi, this is Dan Bloom, part of the marketing team here at Alot, which is a company that provides network intelligence and security solutions for communication service providers and enterprises all over the world. Joining me today on this Telco CyberTalk podcast is Niraj Gandhi, Alot Cybersecurity Marketing Director based in the San Francisco area. Before joining us at Alot about two years ago, Niraj worked with McAfee, Verizon, and other leading companies. Niraj, thanks for joining us here on Telco CyberTalk. Dan, thanks for having me on this podcast and this opportunity to spread the message on the importance of being cyber secure. All right, great. So tell me, what are you working on now at the lot? So uh, at a lot, I'm focused on working with our service provider partners and uh, essentially spreading the cybersecurity awareness, the security as a service offerings that CSPs have uh, from their networks for their consumers. So that is, that is the passion and that is the focus that I have right now. Wow, sounds very good. Uh, one of the things that I noticed is that you wrote a blog post back on February 2nd, and I was checking out the blog post on alot.com, and what I saw is that it's about the importance of blocking command and control servers. And from what I read, it was clear that, that this is something that's very important to share with our listeners. So, Niraj, uh, tell me, what inspired you to write that blog post? So this is something close to my heart. Uh, so thanks for this question. As I mentioned earlier, I am passionate about spreading the word on cybersecurity and educating consumers on the perils of not cyber protecting themselves. Uh, this topic is very important as command and control servers can lead to a lot of harm, not only to enterprises, but also for the end user. Oh yeah, okay. So. As you wrote in the, the blog post, uh, one of the things that I noticed was that uh, it was written that command and control servers are critical components of many cyber attacks. They're used by hackers to remotely control infected devices and launch coordinated attacks, right? That's right. I mean, <clears throat> you know, the command and control servers essentially are the brain of, of a lot of malicious attacks and they control the devices uh, that uh, get infected with the, uh, with the software, with the ma malicious software. What kinds of devices can be infected and remotely controlled by command and control servers? Then that is the scary part. <clears throat> Almost all kind of device can be infected and remotely controlled by the command and control servers. For example, a CCTV or a security camera sensors, all kind of sensors, uh, the Wi-Fi routers, desktop computers, or even the big servers that enterprises have mm -hmm. can become infected and controlled by the command and control servers. And once an IoT device becomes infected, it is very hard to detect. Mm -hmm. How does it get infected in the first place? How does it happen? <laughs> that is a very good question. Um, some of the ways that uh, malicious code is spread is through SMS or email-based phishing messages, malware or trojans and security holes in the browsers and firewalls. Some malicious actors mm -hmm. might even try to hack into the device by trying out various combinations of usernames and passwords. This is called a brute force attack as well. 
Um, on the other hand, fish, phishing messages might be the most common technique used. In this scenario, the hacker sends out SMS or email messages that entice the receiver to click on a link in the message. Okay. This link, when clicked on, allows the hacker to download malware on the client device and then take control of the device. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, I know phishing is a major threat, and, and I hear about it a lot. But, you know, what are some of the risks that command and control servers pose to people and, and organizations? You know, why is this so important? Well, so as you can see, Dan, the command and control servers pose a huge risk to individuals as well as organizations. Using the command and control server, a hacker can to take over the client device and eventually spread inside the network to, to other devices. The malicious code could encrypt all the data on the device or the network and demand ransom from the organization or the individual. If the hacked device is an IoT device, like, say, a security camera again, the hacker could get access to the video stream from that camera. Mm. Or the malware could then generate excessive traffic towards a third-party web server, bringing down that server. Mm. So there are multiple ways a you know, command and control server can be harmful. Right. It really sounds like it's a matter of network disruption and and even uh, potentially uh, contributing to the possibility of DDoS attacks and, and other things like that, right? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, it, it, it's just a, it's a beginning of all kind of uh, malicious activities that could happen uh, and controlled remotely. Okay, wow. So tell me, like, what can be done? Like, how much can can blocking command and control servers actually help to cut these risks related to the things you were talking about, ransom, ransomware, ID theft, DDoS attacks, things like that, and phishing? Like, how much can blocking actually help? Yeah, so, um, you know, since, since the mobile network operators and other communication service providers control the network, um, I believe they can play a big role in protecting their customers. Uh, you know, all traffic is flowing through the service provider servers, so they are in the best position to offer uh, protection from malware, viruses, and other malicious traffic. In, in addition, consumers can utilize safe data practices, like being careful about links and downloads or opening files from unknown sources or keeping their devices um, software updated. Businesses should utilize firewalls, intrusion detection, detection systems, and implement security assessments and security awareness trainings for their employees. Um, so I think there are there a are, um, lot of ways that uh, one could utilize to protect themselves against these uh, command and control servers and um, because these command and control servers are the root of any big attack that's, that's to come. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, those sound like some good techniques. But, you know, back to my question, you know, how much can, can blocking cut the problem? Is it, is it something that, you know, all of these efforts can, can help to block, you know, uh, or all of these efforts to block command and control servers, can it, can it cut the risks? maybe by 10% or 15%, you know, what's your estimate? What do you, how much do you think blocking the CNC servers can help? You know, I am not, not sure about percentage, but I can tell you this, the risk reduction can be huge and mm. it can potentially save a business from being shut down forever or protect its reputation from being permanently damaged. If a phishing attack is successful, say, for example, the hacker could end up with the consumer's personal and financial information, which could result in significant financial loss to the consumer. By blocking the command and control servers, you can protect from being a route um, to a large number of malicious activities like ID theft, ransomware, DDoS attacks that you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, which are all serious threats to consumer and businesses alike. Now, it is always a good idea to have 
multiple layers of security. So having the, um, you know, the, the firewalls and being able to uh, do the uh, intrusion detection systems are, are all uh, good layers to have on top of that. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. It sounds uh, really uh, very interesting, and, and I think that uh, the, the blog post that you wrote, again, uh, that I see on the allot.com website at February 2nd is uh, something that, that uh, could be uh, providing even more information about this. But uh, overall, what's the best way for people to connect with you and learn more about Talat? Um, you know, I think we have uh, a lot of good information on our website at allot.com, mm -hmm. uh, educational and uh, what's going on in the industry um, uh, from a cybersecurity point of view. And the best way to um, connect is through my blog. Um, you know, you can you can comment over there, and and you know, I can I can basically uh, be contacted through, ah. through allot.com. Okay, on the blog uh, and on the on the website. Okay, great. Well, Niraj Gandhi, yeah. Cybersecurity Marketing Director at a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was uh, fun having this conversation. One more thing before you go. Be sure to check out the March 14th and 15th webinars from TAG Cyber and a lot about the latest cyber threat report with new information about Bitcoin Trojans, command and control infections, adware delivered browser hijackers, ransomware, and other cyber threats encountered by our Tier 1 communication service provider partners. More details are available at allot.com. That's it for this episode. Thanks for joining us. If you haven't already, subscribe to this podcast to ensure that you get the next episode of Telco Cyber Talk.